Where's the other eye? Uh, I'm not there yet. Is it a cyclops? It's not, just, just give me a second. Can you draw me? No! Get out of here! Growing up, I was known as one of the art kids. When there was a page to color, the other kids would borrow my markers. When there was a poster to make, that's when people wanted me in their group. And when I wasn't struggling to run the mile in gym class, I was drawing Lion King fan art in my notebooks. And when I felt my best, I was in art class. At my high school, the art room was located kind of at the end, pushed off into a corner. And my teacher would let me and all the other art kids eat lunch in there instead of in the loud, busy cafeteria. I'm not gonna use his real name because I respect his privacy, so I'll call him Mr. Hudson. Because he was a lot like Doc Hudson. You know, the fabulous Hudson Hornet from the Pixar movie Cars? <sighs> Y'all have no taste. Mr. Hudson was an older dude with a deep voice and he'd been working at this high school for years. He was kind of quiet and presumably grumpy because he mostly kept to himself. But once he realized you took art seriously, he would become kind of a mentor. When I was in school, art wasn't a very popular class to take, so if you did want to take art two, three, or four, they'd often combine all the art classes together in the same period. So on my first day of art one, the art two kids warned me not to get on Mr. Hudson's bad side or else he'd bark at you. They assured me he can be really chill. He'll even let you listen to your music with headphones on. Just don't talk once class starts. And I thought they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't listen. A few minutes into class, it's quiet, I'm bored, and I didn't have my headphones. So I started talking to my friend. We weren't being loud, we were just talking, which was mistake number two. The final mistake was when Mr. Hudson did his famous... <coughs> and I was like, well, obviously that wasn't directed towards me. Enough. So from that moment on, I did not speak a word until the bell rang, and I was super intimidated by him, especially during critique. Every day, he'd check in one-on-one -on -one and give really good constructive criticism. He wouldn't just say, that's awful, what are you doing? You should quit art forever. He would say something like, That's looking a little muddy. Don't forget to push the darks and pull in the lights for better contrast. I remember I had a really bad habit of never knowing when to stop working on something. Like, I'd be so obsessed with perfection that I wouldn't be turning things in on time. So he started checking in on me sooner. Though sometimes it was too late. Aside from art advice, he would also offer life advice. And by life advice, I mean he'd let us sneak into the teacher's lounge to use the vending machine, allegedly, allegedly. So if he says he doesn't remember this, I don't either. Must have been a dream. And in that maybe dream, Mr. Hudson came into class with this huge bag and said, Come get a snack. And it was stuffed with vending machine food, the good kind. Candy bars, fruit snacks, donuts, guava juice, giant snake, birthday cake, large fries, chocolate chip. Why did you spend so much money on snacks? I didn't. He slid his keys to me. The machine says there's 75 cents already in it. Put five cents in, press 501, get the snack. Wait five seconds, machine will read 75 cents again, put another five cents in, and bring back as much as you can before anyone sees you. Okay. Don't add more than five cents or it won't work. Turns out Mr. Hudson was a chaotic good and I was lawful good. Who would have thought? Not me. Why didn't you get more? I felt bad. To Mr. Hudson's dismay, the vending machine was eventually fixed so we had to bring our own snacks again. By this time, I was maybe a junior and I was going through hell outside of school. I was with a bad boyfriend to say the least and around this time he was pressuring me to lose weight. I already felt body conscious, as most people do as a teenager, so I started skipping lunch. I want to be very clear here, this isn't healthy. It only left me feeling tired and irritable and hungry from the lack of nutrients I needed. If you're struggling with a problem like this, make sure to check the helpful links in the description. One day while I was painting, Mr. Hudson pulled me aside and asked if I was okay. He noticed how little I was eating and how it was affecting me. I lied and told him, it's fine, I'm just not that hungry. And he said, Okay, I was just nervous and I wanted to make sure you were right. And he walked away. He didn't tell the nurse. He didn't tell the principal. He didn't even tell my parents. He honestly totally should have for my safety, but still. 
It meant a lot that he approached me to talk first. It meant the world that my art teacher was looking out for me like that. I still struggle with how I look and how to treat my body nicely, but when times get tough, I often think about that conversation we had. Despite having the most supportive art teacher a high schooler could ask for, being given the freedom to make anything I wanted to, and having an entire studio all to myself at times, I feel selfish admitting the biggest struggle I've had with art was giving up. There was a painting in the cafeteria of our school mascot. It was super old and we were confident we could replace it with something bigger and better. So Mr. Hudson said, Okay, okay, I'll give one of you a big canvas and you can redo it. And that is a big deal. A project this big would cost a lot of money and North Carolina is one of the poorest states for school funding. So Mr. Hudson most likely spent a lot of his own money in that classroom. Replacing this mascot painting was a big responsibility, and I insisted on doing it. My initial sketch looked fine, but when I started painting, it looked awful. I tried pushing the darks and pulling in the lights to add more contrast, but that wasn't helping either. I knew I could just stop for today and come back to it tomorrow, but I didn't want to leave it like this. What if someone came in and saw it? They'd think it's worse than the original, and they'd be right. Why am I even trying? During this time, Mr. Hudson would come in and check on my progress pretty often. He would comment on a few things, remind me to check my references and anatomy, that kind of stuff. But everything he was telling me was going in one ear and out the other. Because mentally, I had already thrown in the towel. And as soon as he left, I grabbed the biggest brush I could find and I painted over the entire thing. I covered it all up with black paint. And as I sat and stared at the blank canvas, I figured it didn't matter how hard I tried, if I couldn't do it right. At some point, Mr. Hudson came back in and saw what I did, and I expected him to be mad at me, because he totally should have. I was wasting art supplies, I was hogging this opportunity that someone else could be doing better, and worst of all, I had ruined all that I just worked on. You give up on yourself far too easily. Art has a dumb teenage face. It doesn't look the way you want it to right now because it's not finished. You need to finish it. You can't give up halfway through. I remember on my last day of high school, right before I graduated, I came into class and saw a little red sketchbook laying in my spot. I asked Mr. Hudson if someone left it there, but he said, Nope, that's yours. And it was a really cool sketchbook. It had a little strap to hold it closed, the paper was really good quality, and... It was the perfect size for travel, something to take with me to California, where I'd go on to study animation, and later, out of the blue, find my way onto YouTube. And the best part about this sketchbook was, he left a note inside. Perhaps you can create a character based on me one day. No matter how bizarre it is, I will not be offended. Good luck forever, Hudson. I know a lot of you guys who watch my videos want to do digital art and animation as a career too, but when it comes to hardware, you're not sure where to start. I think it's my turn to be your Mr. Hudson. So, everybody shut up. Because this video is sponsored by Micro Center, a computer retail store for all your techie and creative needs. Micro Center sells computers, monitors, cameras, sick gamer gear, and even tablets. You know, the ones for digital art and animation. Also the ones your baby cousins drool all over if that's what you're looking for? It looks kind of wet, but I don't know, whatever floats your boat, I'm not here to judge. I recommend this cute little Wacom Intuos pen tablet. It's a lot like the first tablet I had back in high school. It's lightweight, portable, and super easy to use. Just plug it into your computer and get back to work, no talking in my classroom. Ooh, nice shading. Whether you shop in-store or online, you'll find the best prices. Plus, Micro Center offers tons of great deals and their friendly associates can help you find or even build the best PC for your top secret gamer project happening next year. Oh, you didn't hear that. Micro Center will be offering new customers a free 128 gigabyte USB flash drive and a 128 gigabyte micro SD card as well. Just think of all the Twitch emotes I could put on this thing. If you're a new customer, click the link in the description and head to your local Micro Center for your goodie bag. And for all you aspiring creatives, let me know which Wacom tablet you'll be adding to your wish list this holiday season. And thank you again to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Please, Connor, do a great job. 
Right, okay. <clears throat> I feel like I'm giving orders to Snake. Snake, get in. <laughs> I don't know if that's the vibe you're going for. That's what I... <laughs> You should have you should have robbed the place. I would have. I would have taken. I would. <laughs> uh, I understand. I understand. I, f I forget this is a real story. I. I, I 